understanding the many products and ingredients available to treat aging skin can be very confusing and often intimidating. When looking for products and ingredients to treat aging skin, I recommend you look for products that address four important aspects of this skin condition. First of all, you want to look for a product that has ingredients that not only quenches free radicals, or ROSs, reactive oxygen species, but it also inhibits the MMP enzymes that degrade our collagen and elastin, and they prevent ages or glycation from occurring in our skin. The second aspect you want to consider are ingredients to stimulate cell renewal and cell turnover. This slows as we age. The third thing is to stimulate collagen synthesis. Remember, we're losing 1% of our collagen from our dermis every year after our 30th birthday. And finally, we want to hydrate and reinforce the barrier lipid layer that protects our tissues, protects our skin, and keeps the lower layers nice and hydrated. So let's look at each of these different factors or categories and the ingredients that you should look for. Now, because we're exposed to UV radiation and oxygen, the very oxygen that's vital and necessary for us to live, we are subjecting our bodies and our skin to trillions of oxidative hits a day. This leads to a lot of molecular damage to adjacent molecules. These molecules are free radicals run around trying to stabilize themselves, and at the same time, we're stimulating MMPs or degradation enzymes in our dermis to break down collagen. This gives our immune system a chance to repair from UV exposure and from free radicals. Fortunately for us, the same ingredients that will quench free radicals or reactive oxygen species as we know them, ROSs, will also inhibit MMPs or those degradation enzymes. And the most powerful of these antioxidants um, that quench the free radicals really come from the plant kingdom. My all-time favorite is from Camellia sinensis, which is really the tea plant. And of these, whether you compare green tea and white tea, white tea is the most powerful with the highest concentration of polyphenols. These polyphenols then quench the free radicals, and at the same time, they inhibit those MMP enzymes. You can also look for soy it's on an ingredient list. You'll see it as glycine soya, or licorice, or lycopene from tomatoes. Even resveratrol from grapes or red wine will quench free radicals. And of course, we have vitamin E and vitamin C, but when you compare their sense of their ability to really be antioxidants, they're very weak compared to many of these botanical counterparts. Now, how do these antioxidants work? Well, if you have a free radical, this is a molecule that's lost or gained an electron. And it's very unstable. And it's running around doing everything it possibly can to stabilize itself. And in the process, it will steal an electron from a neighboring molecule. This is what leads to that cascade of oxidative damage that can literally lead to premature aging. When you put an antioxidant in a formula on the skin, what it does is it donates an electron to that free radical and stabilizes the molecule. And fortunately, some of the best antioxidants then can be recharged by fellow antioxidants, so we keep recycling them. Now, the last thing we mentioned was ages. This is advanced glycation end products. And we need to have ingredients that can control the formation of ages, because once you get ages, there's nothing more you can do about it. What are ages? Whenever you have a sugar molecule, and this can be sugar from your diet, when it comes in proximity to a peptide or a protein, a protein being even keratin protein of your skin, they undergo a reaction called glycation. And the end result of this reaction is that the collagen molecules realign, they thicken, they cross-link, and they really, it leads to wrinkling. And what can you do to prevent this from happening? Well, really, all you can do is use something called a sugar trap that traps the sugar, preventing it from reacting with the collagen molecules. Now, I want to give you a little example of some of the different anti-glycation ingredients that you can look for. One of my favorite is arginine lysine polypeptide. This is a small peptide fragment that literally acts as that sugar trap. You can also use soy protein, or you can use the amino sugar called glucosamine. You can even use another peptide called carnosine. All of these will grab onto the sugar molecule so it doesn't react with the protein of your skin. Now I want to show you a little experiment I did in the lab last night in preparation for this. You all know what a self-tanner is. Self-tanners, regardless of who they're made by, all use one active ingredient, which is a sugar molecule. That molecule is dihydroxyacetone. So what I did here on my arm, I applied the dihydroxyacetone here last night, and you can see it's developed into a, a, a tan, 
which you would get from a self-tanner. But here, I mixed the dry hydroxyacetone. Remember, it's a sugar molecule. I mixed it with the arginine lysine polypeptide. Here you can see there is no development of the tan like you see here. The arginine lysine polypeptide molecule acted as a sugar trap, preventing the dihydroxyacetone from reacting with the protein of my skin and forming the tan. That self-tan is a glycation end product. We talked about stimulating cell turnover and cell renewal. We want to do this because as we age, it slows down, and this is what gives us that excess of stratum corneum cells on our epidermis, which gives us that dull, thick-skinned look. So we want to use ingredients like our AHAs, lactic acid in particular, and glycolic acid, as well as the beta hydroxy salicylic acid, that stimulates cell turnover and cell renewal. Unfortunately, these are pH dependent for their activity. And what that can do is that can irritate many people's skin. So if you have sensitive skin, I recommend you look for glucosamine, yeast extract, and urea as a complex that will also stimulate cell renewal and cell turnover, but it won't um, be dependent on a really acid pH, which can be irritating. And finally, retinol, which is converted in our skin to retinoic acid, does an excellent job of exfoliating our skin. How do these lactic acid and glycolic acid work? Well, we know they exfoliate the stratum corneum cells by dissolving the glue that holds the cells together. They also increase collagen synthesis and stimulate hyaluronic acid formation in our dermis to hydrate our tissues. So basically what they're doing is they're increasing the epidermis and the dermal thickness, which plumps up the skin. But unlike glycolic acid, lactic acid has the added advantage of being less irritating to the skin. It acts as a humectant. It also inhibits melanin, which is very much associated with aging skin. And it increases the barrier lipids. So I would take lactic acid over glycolic any day. We talked about stimulating collagen synthesis. Probably the best ingredient to reverse the signs of aging and to do this is retinol or pure vitamin A. You can get even a better benefit when you combine it with vitamin C or ascorbic acid or many of its derivatives. And in particular, I prefer the stabilized magnesium ascorbyl phosphate as a delivery system for vitamin C. You can also use peptides, whether it's palmitoyl pentapeptide 3 or palmitoyl tripeptide 5, the oligopeptides. These will also stimulate the fibroblast to make collagen in our skin. Other collagen stimulating ingredients to look for include soy, yeast extract, and glucosamine. Let's look at how retinol actually can stimulate collagen synthesis in our skin. In the deeper layers of our dermis, we have a cell called a fibroblast. And this fibroblast has receptors on it. And those receptors generally have their red lights on until something stimulates them to go green, to say, OK, make collagen. When we apply retinol to the surface of the skin, those fibroblasts then get activated. And the activation causes the fibroblast to make collagen, to undergo cell growth, and differentiation. So we re replenish and restore many of the cell activity in our tissues. On the other hand, peptides act as chemical messengers. When we put a peptide on the skin, it also talks to the fibroblasts, and it basically says, synthesize collagen, but at the same time, it says to the MMPs to stop breaking down collagen. So using peptides along with retinol and even vitamin C are excellent ways to treat aging skin. And finally, we want to hydrate the tissues and reinforce that barrier lipid layer. The best agent for hydrating our tissues is hyaluronic acid. It holds a 1,000 times its weight in water. It plumps up those deeper tissues. But you've got to keep that water in there. And you do so by reinforcing the barrier lipid layer, which, as we age, tends to diminish. You want to reinforce that barrier lipid layer by using things such as shea butter, oils from like rose or certain nut oils. Oil of evening primrose has a wonderful effect on the skin. So hydrate the tissues with hyaluronic acid. Maintain the amount of time that that hyaluronic acid has an opportunity to hold on to water in the deeper tissues by reinforcing the barrier lipid layer by putting an emollient on the surface of the skin. We've talked about a lot of different things. We've talked about looking for ingredients that fight free radicals, that fight glycation, that inhibit enzymes. We've talked about stimulating cell turnover and cell renewal and using AHAs and BHAs as well as retinol for that. We've talked about the peptides and the retinols for stimulating collagen. But don't forget, probably the most important thing you can do for aging skin is to use a sunscreen. 
I want to thank you for joining us today for today's webisode. To review what we have shared today, click on to the online link on our Facebook page. Be sure to take our short survey to receive an exclusive booklet on the notes for this webisode. And to learn more about aging skin, make sure you also visit dermalinstitute.com. You can see our current class offerings, articles, and videos. See you next time.